What's up, everyone? Ryan Larkin here with another Daily Fantasy Racing Quick Picks on the Mayo Media Network. Uh, had a great race last week at Charlotte. Chaos really reigned supreme. It was an exciting race to watch. Um, Danny Hamlin didn't necessarily dominate, but came through with the win. And Ross Chastain was a phenomenal tournament play. So really excited about how those two uh, ended up. Um, and hopefully we can do a good job this week as well. Um, had a great response to the video last week. Um, hopefully we do that again. So make sure to like this video, subscribe to the to the channel, and um, follow me on Twitter at Larkin8. Uh, just keep keep giving us those that feedback and, and let us know what you guys think. Um, Let's get into the things for this week. Uh, Gateway is on tap for the Cup Series. Uh, first time ever at this track. Uh, looks like it's going to be extremely hard to pass, similar to what we've seen at Phoenix and Martinsville this year. Um, a lot of the drivers aren't, aren't too optimistic about the possibility of passing, uh, which could make for a difficult race. Uh, that also means track position is extremely vital. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see what pit crews can come through and deliver some good pit stops, help some drivers out, and... Uh, what, what guys can deliver in terms of a performance this week when a lot of it may be out of their hands. Um, this week, we're going to do the same thing as last week, give you my top dominator play, my top tournament play, my favorite value option, and then the uh, fate of the week. Uh, so let's jump right into those plays for this week. Um, starting off, my dominator category is going to be Chase Briscoe. Um, love the speed he showed in, in qualifying there. If we're taking um, what the drivers are saying to heart and and the fact that this is going to be a track that's super hard to pass on if he gets out front early we should expect him to dominate a good chunk of this race um he will have the advantage of the best pit stall selection which would be a big help um at keeping track position throughout the race and based off what we saw that car looks really really fast um same thing with all fords as a whole so i really like chase briscoe um to be that early dominator at only 7800 you don't need much from him uh, in terms of domination, you really just need a, a 30, 40 lap stand up front and then a nice solid finish. And he, and he can end up optimal on, on DraftKings. So really like that play. Really like his upside. Um, when you look back at Phoenix, the race that he won, he led 101 laps and, and I believe he had 40 fast laps. So on this style of track, the track that everyone's comparing it to, Briscoe was the guy, shows up this week and looks extremely fast again. So definitely my, my dominator pick for the race. Uh, tournament play, I, I believe Joey Logano is the, the guy. Um, looked incredibly fast in practice. First in, in overall speed, first in 10-lap and 15-lap average, so seems to have some good long-run speed there as well. I, I think the fact that he qualified semi-poorly in seventh um, gives him a little bit of safety net too, a little bit of a few place differential points, and a third-place finish may be enough, enough to, to pay off the price, right? Um, 8,900 is not too much for someone who I think can take over and dominate. Um, but again, like I was just mentioning, I do think he can pay off the price with a simple top three finish. So I really like that pick. I really like what Logano showed this week in terms of speed. Ryan Blaney is a great option in, in that same line of thinking as well. The Penske cars looked amazing in practice, really strong qualifying. They look to be the class of the field. And I think Logano is the guy that kind of contend with for the win at the end of the day. So really looking forward to seeing what he can do. Um, value play of the week, Austin Dillon. Um, normally I like to go a little bit cheaper on my, my value play, but because Briscoe and Logano and, and some other guys come in at lower prices, I don't think we have to drop really far down to get good value. Um, Austin Dillon rolls off 29th in this race, um, while his teammate qualified well inside the top 10. Uh, so a little confused by the difference in speed there in qualifying. Um, also that difference was the same in practice as well. I don't know if RCR is trying things or if, Austin's just struggling in general. Um, but Austin Dillon starting 29th at 7,500 seems to have a lot of upside. Um, he is a driver that excels on long runs, and we are potentially set up for long green flag runs and very few cautions this week in a gateway. So if he can take advantage of what he's excellent at, long run speed, uh, I can see him working his way slowly through the field and ending up top 20, maybe even top 15. Uh, seems like a safe play uh, with a lot of upside. Uh, if you look back at Martinsville, I believe he ended up second in that race. He really was phenomenal once he got 70, 80 laps into a run. He really started picking guys off and drove straight to the front. I'm kind of – I'm not thinking he's going to have that type of top 10 ability this week, but I think he can pick his way through the field to that top 15 and get a really good result, um, especially for DFS purposes. So really like Austin Dillon, um, I think this style of track and – Long run ability really matches what he does. So I'm expecting big things from him in the race. Uh, for the fate of the week, 
I kind of wanted to go all of Hendrick Motorsports. Um, William Byron and Alex Bowman start a little bit further back. Um, so they, they're a little bit safer. But Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, none of the 400 cars have shown much speed this week. Um, nothing in terms of that top 10 speed that we see from them weekly. Uh, so have to be really hesitant on what to expect from them. Uh, Chase Elliott was 15th in 10 lap average, qualified 16th. He seems to be about a 15th place car. Larson, a little bit better in practice, but basically the same thing, qualified one position ahead of him. They just seem to be either a little off or really trying things um, to try to get ready for that final race at, at Phoenix, the championship race. Keep in mind, all four of these cars are locked into the playoffs with wins, so they, they kind of have that ability to take some risk and maybe try some stuff out, um, see if they can find some stuff setup-wise. So I don't love the speed that Chase has shown. Um, at 10200 I don't love the price point. I don't think he's going to have top five upside. Just on speed alone, it's probably going to take a little bit of help from pit crew and, and maybe some strategy or, or things falling his way. And in that aspect, I, I don't really want to pay up for him. Um, is he an okay play? Yes. Could it work out? Sure. But I, I expect the field to play a decent amount, and I want to try to leverage that. I want to try to get under underweight a lot on Chase Elliott, and potentially, in my opinion, I will be fading, but I, I think it's a good idea to at least go underweight or potentially fade like I will. So um, not someone I'm really high on, and and – mainly because of the situation we've seen speed-wise. So um, something to consider when making lineups. Um, I really appreciate y'all watching this video again. Uh, again, like the video, subscribe to the Mayo Media Network, leave a comment, let me know who your favorite plays are, fades, who you're thinking about playing this weekend. Um, follow me on Twitter at Larkin8, or most importantly, you know, join the team with me at dailyfanracing.com. Uh, provide content for all four racing DFS series. So definitely check us out over there. Check me out on Twitter. I'll have links to everything as well. Appreciate you guys watching the video and have a good race.